What's up you guys, it's Rob here. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Today we're gonna to be talking about my weekly watch list video. We'll be going over seasonality. We'll be going over the economic calendar for the week ahead. We'll also be taking a look at Fed interest futures because if you for some reason live underneath a rock and didn't know March 22nd, the Fed is going to announce their next interest rate decision in this very interesting time to say the least right now. So let's go on, dive on in and take a look at this seasonality time frame. And why do I bring up seasonality? Seasonality is such a huge thing. Just like we have four seasons, depending on where you live, the market tends to have seasons as well. Buy periods and sell periods. And some people kind of get caught off guard by these periods of time because they're like, wait, all of a sudden, why are we ripping? And it's like, because seasonality is stepping in here. Now, when we take a look at this, Jan January, we tend to start off very bullish. We did start off very bullish and then we saw a dip down pop up here in Feb. And as we all know, with all the drama behind Silicon Valley Bank and how Credit Suisse, now a couple of other regional banks, we have made a nice fall down here and we're getting ready to make our next move. Now, according to the seasonality chart, that's a bullish move that we could expect a pretty much a buy the dip into May in the beginning part of May before we start seeing a little bit of a retracement. But personally, with me, with everything that's going on, I'm just kind of taking things day by day, honestly, because we are in a very news-driven market right now. Now, speaking about news, let's go on and take a look at the upcoming events ahead for the week. So Monday, nothing. Tuesday, existing home sales might move the market, might create like a little hiccup or something like that. Really, Wednesday is going to be the interesting day. Wednesday, we get the interest rate decision. Are we going to look at 0.25 basis points? Are we going to look at 50 basis points? Or are we going to look at a Fed pivot, as some people are calling for? Or are we going to get someone that's going to come out? We're going to get data-dependent Jerome Powell come out and go, well, we're going to hike by 0.25. We're data-dependent. And... Here's your summary of economic projections, which is going to tell you about where they expect inflation going over into the future, where they expect GDP, where they expect their interest rate decisions, and also members and how they feel about this. And that's really going to be the huge thing that we're going to get outside of the press conference of Jerome Powell answering some questions. And I have a very hard feeling there's not going to be a lot of softballs thrown at him. It's going to be a lot of hardball questions thrown at him. I wouldn't be surprised if he hints at a pivot at the next meeting, because in my personal opinion, if we were going to get the summary of economic projections and a pivot at the same time at this meeting, it would be a lot for the market to digest. I think if we get a step at this meeting, 25 basis points, data dependent Jerome Powell, and he says, I'll answer all your questions. And he can kind of knock around the bush of yeah we're thinking about pivoting given all the facts of what's going on here with our financial system so that's personally just me when i might be looking for him thursday initial jobless claims really fomc is going to be the huge thing this is going to be a foreshadowed event normally would be a little bit of a market mover but with fomc this week honestly I would not be surprised if it doesn't move the market at all. Just my personal opinion. Friday, we get durable goods and we get PMI. Like the Fed says that they only care about PCE. So PMI is kind of like, okay, kind of thing. So that's really the data that we got going on for this week. Now, the huge thing we need to talk about is the Fed futures forecast. The Fed futures forecast right now has a 78, no, 76.8% chance of a 25 basis point hike, a 23.2% chance of a Fed pivot, and a 0% chance of a 50 basis point hike. Now, if the Fed comes out and says that, oh, we're hiking by 50 points and the SEP is really bad, expect the market to honestly flip out because the market is currently not pricing in a 50 basis point hike at all. Right now, if we pretty much get data dependent Jerome Powell, 25 basis points, I would expect that the seasonality chart is going to be reflected correctly and we're going to see a nice large move. Personally, that's just me. But let's go on and take a look at the indices for this week. So really, out of all the indexes, 
I personally like the QQQ the most. That's just me, but we'll hit all of them and then we'll go into my watch list. So with the S&P 500, we have the yearly, we have the quarterly, we have the weekly time frames green. We also have the month and the day red. However, given with what we did on Friday, we created an inside bar. So we traded within the previous day's high and previous day's low. Now, what we can do is we might create another inside bar. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, given the fact that we have this huge FOMC decision going on. I haven't taken a look at futures, so we might have gapped up in futures and this might all be fruitless. But personally, I'm going to be taking a look and just not really playing the market until after FOMC, unless if the market presents me with a trade. So taking a look at the weekly time frame, we did create a failed two down. So if you're a stratter, three, two down, two up is literally all that we're thinking. We could get that three, two down, two down and get the reversal but seeing that this is a pretty strong candle we didn't leave a volume gap or an imbalance really anywhere i would be looking for that two up and really on this day chart when you take a look at it there's probably going to be a lot of shorts up here at 401.48 and 407.45 so those would be periods that i would look at as well as this order block here as well as what we're going to do with that if we break through the order block and turn it into a breaker bar instead when we take a look here as well at the three month, we have pretty much what well, honestly looks like a shooter. We also have a two down, two down, two up. So we have the quarter ending as well at the end of this month. So this is pretty much lining up for what's called a bear trendy Jackson, which is essentially a consolidation pattern, normally with a hard move going in the direction of that final candle. Now, sometimes they don't play out and they go the complete opposite way. It does happen. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the cues, which is personally my favorite. So really with the cues, all time frames are green. We created an outside week. And this is one thing that I do not see anyone talking about at all. We created three outside weeks, which means we broke the previous week's high and the previous week's low, three consecutive weeks in a row. That is a lot of volatility, a lot of volatility in tech. When we take a look here, we're kind of Forming what looks like a little base here. And when you kind of look back at the seasonality chart, you're kind of forming it maybe if you squint your eyes the right way. But the huge thing that I want to take a look at is we have this day time frame that we could easily flip by green and be in full time frame continuity green. When we take a look at the week, we've really kind of consecutively moved up here. So maybe we might finally get that three, two up pattern and start taking out, what is this gonna be here? We're gonna start taking out 313.68, and then the next target after that probably would be this candle here, and take out 318.80, and then if we wanna really get crazy here, we can look at three, what is it, 334.42, and get that. Now with this, if we do hit all of these targets, really, Taking a look at the month time frame, 313.68 and 318.50, we hit 313.68, that's going to match the pre previous month's high. If we hit 318.50, that's going to cause us to create an outside bar, and we would break this pattern of two up, failed two up, failed, uh, that's a two up, and this is a failed two up. So we would create an outside bar. Talk about a lot of chop in here. Now as well, we do have the quarterly candle closing out. Let me delete my fibs off of here. So we do have the quarterly candle closing out as well at the end of this month, which is something that we're going to want to pay attention to because this is in a bearish Randy Jackson form. We are testing a lot of this wick on the shooter, which is a good thing to see. So hopefully we can maintain direction and reverse back up and create what's called a TTO. Now, diving into the Dow Jones Personally, the Dow to me, when I look at the chart on all time frames, really screams the weakest. When you look here, if you're Stratter, full time frame, continuity is pretty much red outside of the week, which we created a failed two down, but we did leave a volume imbalance as well. We do have imbalances down below as well. Given that most of Dow has a lot of 
Banks in it. I believe Goldman Sachs is in there. Dow is going to be affected a lot more by banks and bank news. So just expect that. Take it with a grain of salt, but three, two down, two up. Maybe we might see that this week with all the news going on. Is Credit Suisse going to get bought out or is the Fed going to backstop all the depositors and we're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff? Who knows? But keep that in mind. Keep the news up this week, guys, because it's going to move the market outside of the interest rate decisions. As well, we need to take a look at IWM, good old Rusty. Rusty created an inside day here on Friday. Really looks like it's kind of created a basing pattern to me. We have a two down, two down on the week. We're full time frame continuity red. The only thing that this really looks like to me is it could be a bounce zone. So maybe if we get that 212 reversal pattern, it might start the flip back. Let's take a look here. How long would it take for us to, we would have to flip the week back at 196. 726. We would have to flip the month back at 188.19. So maybe we might get a day and a week flip here, but stretching it to the month might be a little bit hard. Who knows with Rusty? Now let's dive on in and take a look at my first sector that I want to talk about this week is XLC. Communications is a part of tech. So last week, we take a look at the weekly. We did create that outside bar. You have back-to-back -back outside bars for the week. The huge thing that I want to talk about here is what's called this dragonfly candle here that we created essentially a failed two down. We have four days, 26 hours left on this candle. So personally, with us testing this level down here, bouncing off of this fair value gap, I would love to see XLC run to 59.79 if we get that positive news coming out of the FOMC. That's my target on XLC. Really diving into it, taking a look at Netflix. We'll start here on the daily. Got really a bullish RJ form right here. So you got your two up, your two up, you got your two down. Pretty nice hammer here. So instantly your target is gonna be 316.60. On the day, if we want to draw our 50% here, you have your 50% at 305.38. So look at it. If we tend to pull back, maybe look at this level for a bounce and try to play it up for your target at 316.60. When you take a look at T, my bad. I'm skipping around here, guys. Apologize about that. When you take a look at the week, we had a failed two down, so we could create that two up. But keep in mind, these are just weekly plays. These are not swings to really take a look at. Because if I was a swing, when you swing in this market right here, if I saw a two down and a failed two down and we made a two up here, I'd be like, mm, where are we going to take out? Because we might flip back over and fall back down and test this fair value gap out here on the week. Taking a look at the month time frame. Still red on the month, quarter, we're green, year, we're green, but we're making a little bit of a hammer here. So maybe on the month time frame here, we can create a two up next month. It makes sense. When you go back here and take a look at seasonality, seasonality says move up, Netflix might move up. Now let's take a look here at TSM. Personally, TSM for me, this isn't a stock that I play a lot because it tends to kind of bounce around and it's also a Chinese ticker so I just tend to stay away from these. Taking a look here at the squeeze indicator we are getting an orange squeeze your MACD is flipping back to a bullish move and you got an orange dot here which means it is a high squeeze versus a medium squeeze so maybe there might be a move here personally when I take a look at this on the week you got to fail two down you got a one two failed two up, failed two down. So there's definitely a lot of battling going on here between bulls and bears. I do like this candle in the weekly. We did have a lot of buyers step in, very few bidders here on the stock. So that's definitely nice to see. Taking a look at the monthly, a lot of buyers, still a decent amount of sellers, not as bad as last month. We do have a failed two down and we have a two up here. So really, what I'm getting at with all these stocks is lining up 
this next week might be the start of a nice decent run here or it's just gonna be a head fake and we're it's death time just my personal opinion but let's take a look here at google google is personally my favorite out of xlc on the day we head to up we see this nice buyer stepping in on this volume that's what i really like to see with these plays is that buyer stepping in we have this order block here as well do we test the order block? Do we reject it? We test the order block and we break through this. It turns into a nice breaker bar. We also have what I call a booty cheeks pattern on here, which is a nice double bottom. If you're an ICT person, it kind of looks like an inducement model. You have a rundown, you create a low, a pop, and then a higher low right here. So hopefully we can come up here and test out 108.52 on the week. We created a nice fat outside bar with a lot of green volume also want to point it out as well on the st the squeeze indicator you do have this flipping from bearish to bullish and you have a lot of volume stepping in here as well this order block here that we're going to test out so i would really take a look at google moving to 1810882 this week personally in my just my opinion next sector before we get the crypto because crypto is highly on my watch is xlp consumer staples yeah it's boring but it looks like it's gonna go off you have a nice bullish rj indicator here on the week so not the week my bad the day you can tell i'm a little bit rusty on this squeeze indicator says that we're starting to move over here towards a bullish pattern didn't have a lot of buyer step in here on Friday, which is one thing to take a look at this you have a lot more red than what you do green so your bid ask spread you got a lot more people on the bid than what you do on the ask taking a look at the week got a lot more volume there definitely looks a lot better than friday if we take a look at the squeeze indicator we are squeezing down which is interesting the thing that i want to point out is we did bounce off this order block here back from october of 2022 so we are bouncing off of this area. So maybe this might be a point where we start to reverse and create that two one, two down, and sidebar, two up. And our target naturally for that pattern is going to be at 72.98. We do also have targets to the upside as well of 73.26, as well as 74.01. We take a look at the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame we're green. So this makes things interesting because we have a failed two down here, which are really interesting to play. So we have a failed two up. We created two down with a pretty decent amount of volatility and inside bar month. And then we create this failed two down testing. I would almost guess what would be 50%. Not, nope, not quite 50%. Maybe this might be the 382 fib of the previous month let's take a look at that no no 618 my bad there 618 yeah we pretty much wicked it or the 65 so this might be a point where we might see that tto reversal and flip back we do have the quarter on the inside as well so we have a 3-1 pattern and when i take a look at this if you're a patterns person, this is what's called a Harami pattern. This is more of a bearish one because we haven't been able to break these highs. If it was a bullish one, you would see the handle down here and it would be more of a, the Harami patterns pretty much create a kicker pattern and you would see that move up. Now, let's dive on in here and start taking a look at XLP stocks that I like for the week. Walmart. Good old Walmart, always a good stock to play. I absolutely love playing it. On the daily, I see a lot of buyers stepping in here, which is nice to see. We step in here to the weekly. We have the squeeze indicator pointing down, but this could reverse. It is very, very, very shallow, so we could reverse. You do have a three bar, followed by a two down and a two down. You have this inside bar, which is very interesting. I don't know the seasonality of consumer staples and if they tend to turn more bullish or not but the other thing that we want to take a look at is this is going to be 
possibly a point of reversal. Have we reversed from here before? Really haven't reversed from here before, but you can see that once we get below it, it tends to be a very strong selling point back here before we broke through it. So just taking a look at that and what it's worth. For the month, the huge thing that I'm looking at is the two down, two up, two down. You're creating this hammer here, which is really interesting. You have the monthly order block from the inside bar. Let's highlight that high and that low. So you are bouncing off of this order block. So could see Walmart move to 148.34. It's a 2.7. $2.77 ATR on a daily time frame. You could see this fail two down, move back up, test out this order block. Immediate price target here is going to be 141.68. It's going to be the huge one that I would look for because if we can test that out, go for there, followed by 142.65 and really 143.09. If we dive into the four hour, and take a look at this. We do have that two down, two up. So really the first target that I'm, 141.68 looks like a really good target on the squeeze indicator as well. You do have a black dot, which is a small squeeze. Buyers definitely stepping in here. I mean, aside from this period here on Thursday, you definitely have buyers present on the stock. So Walmart, Really would be looking for that upside target of 141.68. I mean, we could reverse back down, but with the strength, this two down candle almost going outside, creating that 313 Ragnarok pattern. Really taking a look at that, I would expect this to move to the upside. Now, Coke to me is very, very interesting. It's yes, it's one of those stocks where it moves very, very slow. It has a 94 cent ATR. But when this thing moves and you buy time on it, it pays. Let me just tell you that. So you got a very, very, very chopping pattern here on the daily. You got one, three, one, three. A lot of chop. You pretty much have been stuck between 58.86 and what is this? 60, 90 since the end of February. So this thing is definitely creating a nice what looks like a basing pattern here because we're holding this order block all the way back from November of last year. We do have the squeeze indicator as well, orange. So this is underneath high squeeze. So something that I would be taking a look at on the daily kind of have a 50, 50 match of buyers and sellers on Friday, but you can definitely see on Wednesday and Thursday as well, buyers did step in. The four day chart really caught my attention here because the 4-day chart, I believe, closes on Monday. We created an inside bar. So you have two up, two up, two down. We're kind of bouncing around in here. So if we can create that two up, we might be able to target that 60-90 and finally be able to break out of this range. Would be really nice. We're, oh, we're, yeah, this is definitely a bounce zone for this stock. So I would definitely be looking for this move to the upside. 6486 as a long-term swing might be a decent target here when you take a look at it. Target that order block all the way up here. If we take a look at the weekly, weekly we created a two up. We filled it here. We have a decent amount. So you're two up, two, two up, two up, two down. Eh, we're just chopping in our range right now, in my personal opinion. We could play this as a long-term swing. You keep your stop here at 58.86 and play it all the way up here to 64.70. It is possible. I mean, your quarterly is on the inside. Your year is on the inside. You have a month and week green. It is possible to play. We do have a fail to down right now. We created two down, two down, two up. So could create a reversal pattern here. If we wanted to go outside, where would we have to go for a month? We would have to go to 61.58, which is entirely doable by the end of the month, given this time period. Now, if we take a look here at the next stock that I want to point out, MO, this one has 
pretty much been in what I would call a basing pattern for a long period of time. We had this large move down. You can see the dramatic uptick in volume, the huge stretch down here in the MACD moving back bullish. We see a large amount of volume come in here on Friday that is red. So a lot of people selling the stock versus a lot of people buying it. Squeeze indicator is red as well. So maybe we might flip over or this could just completely crap. After all, you are in full time frame continuity red. So taking a look at the week, when we dive in here a little bit closer, we have a two down. You have your two down, two down, two up, two down. So your bearish RJ did pay out your squeeze indicator. Still moving to the downside. Still seeing a lot of selling. So downside targets for me that I would be looking at is breaking really this structure. Eh, not That's not a structure break. But $44.99, your structure break would be basically at 43.18 and if you got that break of 43.18 I would target this order block right here in the bottom of the order block which would be 40.35 and you're talking about a stock that moves at 77 cents a day that's a little bit of a slow mover but definitely still one that is decent and could pay when you dive in and take a look here at the month you got your two up your two down your two up your two down so We've basically been chopping around squeeze indicator points that something's going on. It's a low squeeze. We have divergence in the MACD pointed toward the downside. You do have volume as well. So those downside targets that really can be seen here on the weekly would be what I would be looking at for MO. Now, Costco. Good old Costco. Who doesn't love it? We created an outside bar here on... Friday, we did see a decent amount of buyers come in along with some sellers. We do have a squeeze going on the daily. We take a look here at the weekly. We did create a nice failed two down here with a lot of buyers. So with this, this is telling me that we're pretty much due for a bounce here. We're also creating a higher low here when we take a look at Costco. We are creating a higher low. So really, if you want, if you like your patterns, this could be an inverse head and shoulders. I would look for that TTO, TTO, pardon me, back to the upside. And I would start targeting the order block here at 498.63. And then the top of that order block would be 511.42. We do have full time frame continuity red, it, not red, my bad, green. I'm apparently blind. We do have that. So that is one thing that is definitely in our favor with Costco is mo that move back to the upside. We have buyers on our side. After all, we've seen a lot of buyers. The squeeze indicator is against us, but we're barely on the other side. So this could easily flip back and we could start reversing in the other direction. Once again, point back to seasonality. Definitely a thing that we might want to take a look at. Now, my sole focus this week outside of these two sectors is going to be crypto because if you haven't seen if you take a look at btc usd over the weekend bitcoin has absolutely ripped when you look at it on a four hour time period we have ripped over the weekend we're cracked over twenty eight thousand. i believe we hit a high of 28 5 28 close enough 28.5 so it's a decent move for bitcoin over the weekend but bitcoin stocks i would really be taking a look here at coin coin is really interesting to me because you have this break of market structure for the first time in a very long time we finally closed above 73.30 and you could almost move it up to here which would be 73.97 the fact that we broke above this point shows that we're shifting directions and we're having that change buyers are stepping in we are starting to see more buyers step in the squeeze indicator that is here nice red we're flipping that macd back to the positive side now what would i look at for targets i mean coin is a very volatile stock to say the least so i mean is 87 out of the question not entirely on the week if we take a look better here back-to-back -back outside weeks 
So 87 really is going to be that natural next target. 87.63, it sounds crazy with the stock being only at 74.98, but it does absolutely move with crypto. Followed by 95.50 would be my following for the week. Then after that, 103.55. You do have a massive green bar here. So buyers are definitely stepping in for this stock. That's something that you need to pay attention to is volume. Are you getting more bids or are you getting more ask? Because it's going to drive the market. Along with really taking a look at market structure shift and seeing that the fact that we finally, yeah, we made a lower low, but we broke through this with volume, which is nice. And we got the squeeze on our side and we got full time frame continuity on our side. You got to put all these together, make a plan, execute your trade. Now let's go take a look at the monthly time frame before I wrap this video up. Now, we really want to get crazy here. We have a failed two down hammer, which is amazing to see. We bounced off of this bullish order block. So naturally, our high 87, 87.63, crazy enough, is going to line up with making an outside bar, which means we would literally have gone three to a three bar for coin on the month. Kind of crazy, but definitely something you can do. So when you play these tickers, you gotta watch Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to be the leading indicator of how coin, how MSTR, how Mara, and how Riot move. Those are just the ones that I play. There's several other ones that you can play as well. Now, let's take a look here at MSTR. MSTR is not personally my favorite because it tends to have a very wide spread. You can see Friday, definitely a lot of volume that stepped in on the week. You can see that we created a nice two up here. You are creating though a bearish RJ pattern. So you got to be aware of both sides here. Remember, hashtag play both sides. Got your two down, your two down, and your two up with a lot of volume here. So might be a shift in direction. You also created a nice higher low here than here. Your structure, when you take a look at it, is all the way down here at 134.09. Really, or when I say structure, you're looking at your buy side and your sell side liquidity. So your sell side liquidity definitely appears to be down here at 134.09. Buy side wise, I would be targeting really this wick on the three. Oh my god, that's 477. Good lord, that that would be insane. No, okay, let's tame it back a little bit. 358. God, that still even feels much. But I mean, these are Bitcoin takers, so 315. It, that's definitely a possible possible move with the ATR being at 1927, targeting that order block here to the upside. That's the huge thing that I'm seeing with a lot of these crypto indicators is the fact that there is an order block that they are targeting. All right, let's try to wrap this up because I'm getting very long winded here and I apologize for keeping you guys so late. 315 would be the previous high of the month, also would create this outside month showing that we bounced off of this bullish order block. So definitely something that we could target. Mara, let's take a look at Mara. Same as I think as coin created a lower low. Can we break this structure though? Is the question. Can we break above? If you get the break above 866, really, and I would almost be tentative to say 957. If you get a break above 866, look for 957 next. And then you could start the nice move up because you get a nice PMG here to the upside from Mara on the daily. Weekly time frame nice amount of buyers stepped in so what this is telling me is you're seeing a rotation in the market you're seeing people rotate into crypto which kind of makes sense given the banking crisis going on right now so got your two up here your targets really to the upside and be 866 957 you got full time frame continuity on your side you got an inside bar here if we do target 866 we're going to create an one three pattern which is known as a nirvana pattern is a very strong pattern and we would start targeting this bullish word block to the upside after 957 with riot we have a two up here we have pretty much the same thing all crypto tickers are kind of looking the same we got this lower low here but we with riot we broke that structure here of these two highs here 
and we broke through it really if we zoom out even more that yeah this was a large structure break so if we can come back here test this maybe our squeeze indicator shows that we went from a red squeeze to black which is small but we are still seeking buyer step in which means we could continue to move afterwards on the week we have a nice huge two up candle here so really you're getting to the point where where did we reject we cre rejected off of a candle from september 22nd september 12th 2022 so we created relative equal highs so the huge thing would be to see and watch for a break here above 867 on the weekly time frame on the month you got your two up and you got your outside bar already so we've already created the outside bar here so maybe right might be forecasting what other ones might do as well which would be kind of crazy when you think about it but really after that we got our targets here to the upside of 867 1052 would be absolutely insane but i mean if bitcoin does go wild bitcoin could absolutely take us there but really guys sorry about the long-windedness of this that's my watch list that's the recap for this whole entire week if you have any questions or anything like that drop them down below in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next one peace